Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how you can make a program to send emails. Uh, it's pretty simple, but hopefully I'll put up more videos later uh, expounding on what you can do with that and, you know, different uh, projects you can go from there. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project. So just go File, New, Project. You're going to want to go uh, Visual C Sharp, Windows, Windows Forms application. Uh, you can name it anything, let's just go with uh, my email program. And there it is. First thing you're going to want to do is add a way for you to uh, like put a layout, make it look pretty nice. So we'll add that. For this we're going to want row count to be 10. And we're going to want it to fill the whole space. So let's go to dock and set that to fill and then right click on it go to edit rows and columns rows and set the percent of each to 10 10 rows 10 percent each be evenly spaced then we're going to want to go to common controls um, then go to label to add um, a header for our program you can make this again anything you want we'll ju I'll just go with uh, my email program. Go up to the top where you have anchor, set that to none, and then we're going to set column span to two. That'll put it right in the middle there. Uh, we're going to want to change the font because that's a little small. Set it to 14. Alright, cool. So now we're going to want to add labels for all these, and this side will just be where we label uh, what we're going to add, and we'll add all our text boxes over here. Um, so we'll add our labels. And we'll leave these bottom two blank and I'll we'll show you that why. Actually let's just add a, a button for these two. We can change those later. So let's select all these. Just that we can turn anchoring off for all of them and then unselect these two so that we can set the font for these to uh, let's change the size, let's make it 12 and then we can change the name of each one based on what we actually want it to be so this first one is going to be SMTP server SMTP port. Whoops, that's a mistake. Um, login email. Login password. Email to. Subject. body and attachment and let's make this one a little larger and then this we want centered because this is our submit button so just like we did for the header I'm gonna go up to um, col span column span set that to two and then next we're gonna want to uh, add some text boxes Actually, before we do that, let's go to Edit Rows and Columns, change the width for each of them, the first one to 640 and the second one to 60, just so it looks a little nicer. Uh, drag that out a bit. Again, take anchoring off. Set this to None. And then just copy and paste it for each of these. Oops. There we go. And now we didn't change the name for all the labels, but we're definitely going to need to for these. So you're going to go up to name here and just name these. I mean, you can name them anything, but for this, let's name them um, the same, you know, what we want these text boxes to contain. So again, 
login email. Login password. Email to. Subject. Body. And attachment. Okay. So now at this point, we've got it. Oh, one more thing. Take the login password. You're going to want to go to, um, let's see, where is it? Password character. Change that just to an asterisk. And basically, that makes it so when you type in there, it'll show that instead of the text. So you can press F5 or run. And as you can see, looks like this, looking pretty good. Buttons obviously don't do anything. Um, actually, let's set the default for these to the Gmail default just because that's what I'm going to be using. Save some time. Uh, and people can change these, obviously, but it'll just be set like this um, because I'm going to be using it for Gmail. All right, so there. It's good. Set up. So now we need to actually make the buttons do something. So for the first thing, we want it so when they click this button, it opens a file window. They can choose the file, and it'll place it in there. So double-click this, and now... We're in this area where basically what it, when that button's clicked, what we put in here will happen. So I'm actually just gonna copy and paste from what I'd actually where I'd made it earlier, just to save some time. I don't want this video to be too long, uh, and I'll include all this code. But and then I'll explain it here. Uh, so we got string file path. Obviously, we're just creating an empty string, and here we're creating an open file dialog. Um, and here uh, when it opens we're going to set the string we created, the file path, to whichever file you choose. Um, so after you do that, then it's going to set this.attachment.txt to file path, which is what we set, you know, which was the file path from the file we chose. Now this.attachment.txt is what's in here. And you'll see that for everything, like this.body.txt is here, this.subject, you know, etc., all the way up. So at this point, after you do that, this will fill in this with what you need, which is perfect. So next, we want to do when we submit, it actually creates the email, fills it in with everything, and sends it. So double click submit, and again, same thing as this. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to do it the same way and just copy this over, and I'll explain it. Uh, I think it's just easier that way than watching me, you know, type it all out. Saves you some time, and I don't have to worry about making too many typos. Alright, so we'll paste it in there, and I'll just go through. So, man, there's some... Oh, yeah, one thing we're going to need to add is the libraries that we use. Um, so, for that, we're going to need system.net, system.net.mail, I think. Yep, and then system.io. Alright, so let's go back down to our button click. So now what this does here is we take the SMTP server and port, and it's going to create like an SMTP connection. Um, but the reason I have this line before it is I'm creating an integer port that converts the string that we have for SMT port to an integer, because this will not allow you to use a string. It needs the actual number port. So we add that in, and we've got this created. Next, we need the credentials for it. So we set the credentials um, using this login email text and this login password. Again, just the text that we put in here and here. Um, and then we're going to do SMTP enable SSL true, because it needs to be enabled in order for Gmail to accept it. And then here we actually create the like the message. So we set create the address with the login email create the, the to address with the email to, and then we actually make the message with, you know, some of both. And then next we're actually going to fill the message in. So we got this new message we created right here. We're going to set the subject to whatever we had in that subject box, the body to whatever we had in the body box. And this is where we actually add the attachment. So we create the new attachment, and it's going to create it from whatever was in that box, which we filled in by clicking the button. Uh, and then here it actually adds the attachment. The reason for this if uh, block is we want it 
basically this does, if it's not null or empty, this string, it's going to perform this. The reason we need that is if we just left this out and had this, let's say you wanted to send an email without an attachment, it would just error out because it would be trying to send the, attach the attachment with nothing there. So we have to add this block in there. So then now, that's pretty much it. Next, we just need to send the email. We've got the SMTP, which is our connection, send, and then the actual message here. Again, the message we created, as you can see. And then the last thing is just we have it, you know, pop up a message box to say your email has been sent, uh, so you know that it was actually sent. So that's pretty much it. We'll uh, run it now, make sure it works and everything. So I'll just do my email. And I actually created a uh, a test email just for this. So code channel test at gmail.com. Subject, uh, this is a test. Body, this is the body. And then for attachment, yeah, I'll just attach something from my test folder. This is for just something else, but it'll work for this too. Alright, and you see it fills it in. Just click submit, and this should work. Email has been sent, so let's confirm. I thought I had it open already, but I guess not. So we'll go to Gmail. Hopefully it's logged into this one still. Alright, code channel test. And yeah, this is from the one earlier where I actually forgot to record the sound, so that was pretty annoying. Recorded the whole thing without the sound. So you got it here. Uh, again, it's from my email. This is the body all typoed out. And this is that test. We'll view it. Make sure it worked. Yeah, and that's just the random data I had in there. And all right, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'll show you how to create an email program. And again, this is pretty simple. There's not too much use for it as is. But you can use this and adjust it to fit, you know, whatever needs you want. For example, uh, for a friend, I had a, I had modified something like this where when he used his attachment, he, he could set it to a folder and it would just select all the files within that folder and subfolder and attach them all. So instead of, you know, having to manually attach every single file one by one, this would just attach all, you know, however many hundreds of files and he could send that out. So which is pretty convenient. And that's just one example. So I'm hoping to expand on this in the future. But for now, get a quick tutorial on how to make an email program. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.